All right, this is chapter A, and we're going to be talking about pathophysiology um, and how it applies to pre hospital environment. Um, so, pathophysiology is the study of physiology of auditory functioning in the presence of disease. So we're going to talk about a lot about different diseases um, we may encounter and how it differs um, anatomy and physiology of normal homo homeostasis of the body. The um, cells, as far as adaptation, um, when it's close to it bursts. Condition cells undergo a process of adaptation. Uh, atrophy is decreasing the cell size due to a loss of subcellular components. Um, hypertrophy is increasing the cell size due to cells due to synthesis of subcellular components. Um, hyperplasia is increasing the actual number of cells in an organ or tissue. Dysplasia is alteration of the size, shape, or organization of cells. Um, metaplasia is reversible cellular adaptation in which one adult cell is replaced by another. So the human body is comprised primarily of water, um, changes in fluid and, and electric balance that disrupt homeostasis can either cause or exacerbate various disease processes. So the degree of fluid imbalance is required to compromise homeostasis. It depends a lot on the patient's size, age, and a lot of medical condition, um, and fluid therapy. Um, fluid therapy is a fundamental step in resuscitation, and we have to think about that um, when we're doing that process and how it can actually cause changes in, a, in with pathophysiology. Uh, however, the main goal is to you know get that. Um, pulse back and get the heart pumping. But, you know, you also have to look down the road um, post cardiac arrest as far as how we're um, how these patients are, are going to recover in the long run. So, so isotonic fluid deficient um, decreasing the exterior fluid with proportionate losses of sodium and water. Um, it is most commonly caused from fluid loss you know, heat you know, um, exacerbation and well, heat exhaustion um, due to um, sweating a lot. Isotonic fluid excess and proportionate cause of study in the water and extracellular fluid common causes acute um, kidney and heart failure where the body is not able to put off that edema um, through voiding or um, some other means. So some electrolyte imbalance of sodium regulates fluid balance, total fluid volume, and blood pressure in the human body. Um, so hypertonic fluid deficiency occurs during the disproportionate loss of sodium during water loss. Um, like I said, you know, during um, heat exhaustion or heat stroke. Also, you know, some patients could be put on a um, diuretic therapy and they are avoiding all the time, but they also, you know, that's prescribed to them, but they don't understand some of the side effects. Um, like hypernatremia is the sodium level of 143 milli equipment or per liter or higher, or hypernatremia um, is the sodium level of 135 milli equipment per liter or less. So, potassium um, could also be an imbalance. This is a crucial to many cellular functions due to that potassium is a positive ion and it's helping keep start those cellular functions. Um, normal serum level is 3.5 to 5.0. Um, hypokalemia decreased serum potassium level and hyperkalemia is an elevated serum potassium level. Um, so there's many different causes of hypo that could be used. Decreased dietary potassium intake or absorption. 
decrease shift in potassium into the cells, renal potassium loss, or X um, for renal potassium loss. Hyperkalemia could be um, caused by decreased excretion, um, shifts of potassium within the cell, and excessive dietary potassium density. Um, another imbalance could be calcium. It's normal in this 8.2 to 10.2 milligram per deciliter. Um, hypo calcium could be decreased calcium intake, increased calcium loss, um, in, endocrine disorders, and sepsis. Hyperkalemia um, could be increased calcium intake, endocrine disorders, or neoplasm. All right, phosphate is primary intracellular anion. This is essential to many body functions. Hypophosphemia is decreased um, level in serum phosphate. So, um, look at extra correction intracellular shifts of phosphorus. Um, electrolyte abnormalities and abnormal loss of nutrients followed by inadequate um, replenishment. Hyperphosphatemia. Increased level of serum phosphate, massive loading of phosphate into the extracellular fluid, decreased excretion into the urine, some of those causes. All right, magnesium is 50% stored in the bone, 49% um, into the body cell, and 1% extracellular fluid. It's normal range is 1.32.1 uh, milliequivalents per liter. So, um, hypomagnesium is decreased magnesium or absorption or intake. Increased renal loss of magnesium, miscellaneous causes may be caused by diabetes, respiratory alkalosis, and pregnancy. High fur magnesium, the increased level of serum in magnesium almost always occurs due to renal insufficiency. All right, you can have a um, disturbance of the um, acid base balance. Um, pH is a measure of acidity or alkalinity of a solution. So the lower the pH on the scale, um, the higher acidity. Um, the disturbance in acid balance are usually associated with disturbances of potassium balance. So normal pH is um, Seven point three five to seven point four five. So you're looking at range in the middle of seven point four. Uh, respiratory acidosis is related to hyperventilation. Um, so anytime a patient's having respiratory problems and their pH is off, um, we usually associate it with respiratory acidosis. Um, so we look at the pH being below seven. So anywhere between zero to that 7.35 to 7.45 range is acidic. Um, anything above that 7.4 range, um, um, the numbers get really high, maybe into the tens or stuff like that. They're um, alkalotic. So you have to think about. I usually think about it on a rule of kind of um, object, and your 7.4 is in the middle. You have to think of acidity below and alkalotic above. Um, when you think of acidity, think of patients with hypoventilation. They're not breathing off that um, um, acid, that carbonic acid. So they're not expelling it in their tissues, and the exchange of CO2 and O2 is not happening efficiently. Um, anybody that's breathing really fast, um, you think of um, alkalosis. So we'll get into this a little bit more. So some um, causes of hypo respiratory acidosis could be airway obstruction, of course. Cardiac arrest causes their apneic. Um, overdose of a CNS depressant drug, that's a central nervous system depressant um, due to the causes of hypoventilation there. Immersion, of course, because of drowning, respiratory arrest, um, being apneic. Pulmonary edema, you have all the fluid buildup. Um, and it may be getting into the lungs, so these patients are having a really hard time um, breathing off that carbonic acid. So they're not, you know, their range is below 12. Um, 
cause his head injuries due to the cushion reflex and the hyperventilation that's um, that caused their chest trauma also due to, you know, that trauma to the chest, whatever it may be caused by, and the decrease in um, respiratory right there. Um, sometimes the symptoms of acidosis, um, systemic or cerebral vasodilation, headache, lightheadedness, warmth, less skin, um, nausea, vomiting, decreased respiration. Yeah. Respiratory alkalosis is associated with conditions that result in high perventilation, so the level of circulating carbonic acid is reduced. They're actually able to breathe off that carbonic acid. That exchange is happening. Um, you know, after those, they're keeping it. The carbonic acid, alkalosis, they're not keeping it. So, some kinds could be a drug overdose, depending on what the drug is fever, overstelius, rag valve, mass ventilation. Side symptoms include diminished level of consciousness, lightheadedness, uh, prestigious of the face and lips, chest tightness, confusion, vertigo. All right, metabolic um, alkalosis, um, it is due to um, question, let's go over acidosis. Metabolic acidosis is associated with any acidosis unrelated to the respiratory system. So your patient's not having any trouble breathing, um, but when they do a pH or they take the blood um, or you see signs and symptoms of an imbalance, um, it's usually metabolic in nature due to um, lactic acidosis, ketoacidosis, DKA patients with hyperglycemia, you know, possible aspirin overdose, um, excessive alcohol ingestion, gastrointestinal losses, or carbon monoxide poisoning. So some signs of fitness with metabolic acidosis is vasodilation, CNS depression, headache, warm plus skin, nausea, vomiting, cardiac dysrhythmia. Um, it doesn't occur because of um, all right, metabolic alkalosis is um, occurs due to an excessive loss of acid. Uh, it's commonly acute and chronic, but common. It's not an acute condition that takes time. However, it can be a chronically ill patient. Um, so you got a patient that's you know, been vomiting for a long time, um, trying to drink a lot of water because they feel dehydrated, and they drink too much. Um, some of the symptoms are confusion, muscle tremors, cramps, um, and hypertension. So, just to reiterate this, respiratory alkalosis and acidosis, you're involved in some kind of respiratory effect, some shortness of breath or something like that. Metabolic alkalosis and acidosis, you don't have a respiratory compromise. However, you're seeing some signs of sickness that something's not right um, and they're not having any shortness of breath. So you think about the metabolic, metabolic side. So with this, we may have a failure injury the cells itself suffering the injury. Um, there may be several causes here listed hypoxia, ischemia with cardiac patients or you know, respiratory patients, chemical injury, um, infectious injuries, especially with your septic patients, um, immunological injury, uh, physical damage itself, and maybe an inflammatory injury, you know, maybe a sports related injury or some type of blunt or piercing injury to the Sell it, sell. So the manifestation of cellular injury occurred at microscopic structural or functional levels. Um, some common microscopic abnormalities include cell swelling, rupture of cell membranes and nuclear membranes, and breakdown of the nuclear materials such as chromosomes and cell. Um, some functional disturbances may include insufficient O2 utilization, intracellular acidosis, and toxic waste accumulation, 
and the arrangement of nutrient returns on metabolic utilization. So dysfunction in one system inevitably affects the function of other systems for the cellular injury. Um, and it can be repaired if um, up to a point with proper treatment. So if you get there too late, um, it is not repaired. Repairable. So hypoxic injury, um, it is usually obviously deadly to the cell itself. Um, some causes may be decreased in amounts of oxygen in the air, loss of hemoglobin function um, due to a loss in the number of red blood cells. So the hemoglobin is not attaching to O2, the oxygen um, cells to it to circulate it. Um, Cells that are hypoxic on more than a few seconds produce mediators, which lead to some more cell damage. Um, these free radicals are the earliest and most dangerous mediators produced by the cell. All right, chemical injury, um, cyanide, pesticides, long term ingestion of lead, um, carbon monoxide, high doses of ethanol could have. Um, Signs of symptoms, you know, such as hypoxia, some neurological deficit, um, dysfunction, um, and some CNS depression that lead to hypoventilation of some of these. Infectious injuries occur as a result of invasion of bacteria, fungi, or viruses. Um, um, these measures these disease causing the ability of a microorganism. Um, a depressed immune system is less capable of fighting off microorganisms. Um, viruses take over metabolic processes of uh, the host cell and use the cell to replicate. So basically, so let's talk about um, let's talk about sepsis. Okay, sepsis causes a systemic disease caused by a microorganism. And it's in the blood and it's going to take over, um, but your immune system is trying to fight, fight, fight the, the fight um, for so long that it becomes depressed. Um, so basically this virus takes over the RNA or the DNA of the cell and the host cell leads to a decreased synthesis of uh, molecules that are vital, vital to the host cell. So basically, you know, it produces um, cells that are not, that can lead to dangerous things. Um, cells that are not properly produced during normal homeostasis, okay? And this is where those, I call them weird cells, come up um, and they start producing and they lead to other things that we'll talk about. All right, immunological and inflammatory injury, inflammation, protective response, and there's presence of failure injury. Besides symptoms, you know, heat, redness, tumor, swelling, and pain. Um, an inflammatory process, severe systemic um, effects become evident. So, the, pill, the person may feel ill when the body temperature elevates with a fever. So, the bone marrow accelerates to produce leukocytes, which is a white blood cell. So, and this is outcome depends on the amount of tissue damaged. So, here's a chemical injury. Um, you got the physical and pathogenic microorganism. It causes tissue injury, um, and then that's what really leads to the redness, the swelling, the tenderness, and the pain. Some injuries, genetic factors. Um, an abnormal gene may develop by mutation of the gene during meiosis, um, by heredity, um, and also as a result of other causes later in life. So these genetic factors may Damage cells, including chromosomal disorders, premature premature development of arteriosclerosis, um, and it could lead to obesity sometimes. So, injuries to nutritional imbalance include um, obesity, malnutrition, vitamin excess or deficiency, and mineral excess or deficiency. Some physical agents or conditions such as heat, cold, radiation, if you're exposed to something for a long period of time. Um, 
and then the degree of cell injury is determined by the strength of the agent and the length of exposure that that cell is actually exposed to the um, opposing agent itself. Um, apoptosis is normal cell death. It's part of of the development um, immune function in the tissue growth. So, genetically programmed into the cell is part of normal development. Um, proteins of DNA undergo control de um, degradation that allows their remnants to be taken up and reused by neighboring cells. So these areas um, do not show any evidence of inflammation and it's activated premature by pathological factors such as cell injury. The inhibition of normal course of apoptosis allows destruction destructive cellular proliferation. So all the stuff is exposed, takes the normal cell and it makes it abnormal. So if the immune system is effective, it destructs the destruction of the abnormal cell. If it's not, if then you know we have some causes of that makes the immune system ineffective and these cells can become cancerous and they look like cancer. All right, necrosis is tissue death. It resorts as a methyl change that occurs during cell death. Simple necrosis, derived necrosis. Simple necrosis is just where it's gross and microscopic tissue. And some of the cells are recognizable. Um, it may be due to acute ischemia, toxicity, or direct physical injury. Derived necrosis includes um, cessation. Um, necrosis, um, dry gangrene, frank necrosis, and lipification necrosis. All right, hyperperfusion occurs when the level of tissue decreases below normal. Shock is the um, abnormal state um, associated with inadequate outstanding nutrient delivery to the cell. So, um, all right, so in the response, um, vasodilation may occur. So the body releases catecholamines, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Um, it re produces increased strength and product contraction. So it increases the pulse rate, vasoconstrict, and increases systemic vascular react, um, resistance. So when the body's responding to um, some kind of invasion, so um, everything speeds up because it's trying to fight off and get back to that normal homeostatic state, um, and it's producing you know white blood cells to help them fight you know this injury or whatever's going on inside the body itself. Um, increased pulse rate, um, vasoconstriction. Um, so that puts the hyperperfusion coming into play. Um, because the body's using more of the fluid and the blood itself. So it's going to decrease the um, blood pressure. So shock can occur because of the result of inadequacy of central or peripheral circulation. So um, you're looking at if hypo, hypo perfusion overwhelms the uh, compensatory mechanism in the patient condition. Um, deteriorates, it could lead to decompensated shot where it cannot get back to um, normal. All right, some different types of shock uh, cardiogenic, obstructive. Um, cardiac tachyon is a cardiogenic type of shock. And um, obstructive shock is, you know, the veins itself, something. Grows around the bank, grows around the bank itself, and it decompresses it. Um, or it, you actually have a bleed, um, and the vein itself is tore open. So, peripheral shock lead is hypovolemic shock, circulating blood volume is insufficient, deliver oxygen, um, nutrients to the bottle body. So, 
We have exogenous and endogenous um, hypothalamic shock, um, distributive shock with respiratory dilation of the resistance vessels, um, or anaphylactic shock is the histamine or other vasodilator protein are released on exposure to an allergen, um, aka anaphylactic shock. We'll talk about that. Um, or anaphylaxis. We'll talk about that in a later chapter. Septic shock with sepsis is a widespread infection. Neurogenic shock results from a spinal cord injury. So, and that's what's on this slide that I just talked about. So, you may have a spinal cord injury. You see the on the bottom left, the normal vessel and in the circumference there. Um, and then once those vessels are dilated, it opens up that um, fluid resistance um, comes less, you know, which leads to the blood pressure um, tanking on you or going down. So how do we manage shock? shock? Um, it's characterized by cardiac output, circulatory insufficiency, and a rapid heartbeat. So evaluate the presence and volume of peripheral pulses and assess in organ perfusion and function. So how do we process, assess in organ perfusion? We look at um, skin. You may see some peripherals in or central cyanosis, um, delayed capillary refill, um, modeling, different things like that. This may lead to MODS, multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. Um, these are pretty, pretty ill patients. So concurrent failure of two or more organs or organ systems that were initially unharmed. So the body, you know, is trying, it's trying, it's trying, and finally sometimes it just gives up. So you may have respiratory, hepatic, renal, hematologic, um, neurologic, or cardiovascular symptoms are surveyed in diagnosis of MODS. Um, So primary mods is a direct in, um, result of an insult, such as pulmonary contusion. Um, secondary mods is poor, um, could be slower, and it takes longer, but it progresses to organ dysfunction. So your primary organ you know, dysfunction syndrome, it could be just like pulmonary related to itself, and it's you know, due to that contusion. Um, however, if it can't repair itself and the toxins keep on floating around and the body can't fight it off, it could lead to more than one um, organ dysfunction, and that's secondary. So how does the body's self-defense mechanism work? So the immune system includes all structures and processes associated with the body's defense against foreign substances. Um, some anatomical barriers you know, decrease the chances of foreign substances invading the body. So some examples of anatomic, anatomical barriers are the skin, the hairs, um, and the acid in the stomach. So the body um, defense reaction to any foreign substance. Um, um, you got natural immunity and acquired immunity. Um, Natural immunity is non-specific. Cellular or antibody response to operates as the first line of defense against the pathogens itself. Um, acquired immunity is the recipient of performing antibodies to fight or prevent infection. So you've had an infection before, your body remembers that, so it creates these antibodies, um, and that's how you acquire it. So here we got an antigen um, and an antibody, and this is just our um, analog. Um, a graph that shows you an algorithm that shows you how the body's immune response is going to initiate um, and what the end result is going to be and how it responds to it. Um, 
Big Joe Web Science produced antibodies called immunoglobin, um, cell mediated immunity. The spread groups of T lymphocytes destroyed the farm. And here is a graph of that. Um, Um, so the body is going to produce some basal fields and neutrophils and monocytes and lymphocytes and macrophages, mast cells, um, to help fight against that infection. Uh, some B cells, some helpful B cells, some T cells also. Um, so still many added immunity is characterized by formation of population or uh, population of lymphocytes that can destroy the foreign material. So there's some killer T cells, some helpful T cells, um, different things like that. And this one, um, so this is just some different ways of um, monomer and pentamer, depending on the way it's shaped and how it can fight off the infection. You know, it may have more than one site on the IgM down there versus the singular site on the IgG at the top. So inflammatory response, um, inflammatory reactions and immune responses are independent processes. So acute um, Inflammatory responses involve vascular and cellular components um, during the inflammation. The mast cells degranulate and release a variety of substances. So they may have vasoactive amine, um, and then they may also synthesize leukotriene and prostaglandin. Polymorphical correction. Polymorph nuclear neutrophils arrive at the site of the tissue injury. Um, they work in two phases. Stages, intravascular phase, leukocytes move to the side of the blood vessels and attach to the endothelial cells. Um, extravascular phase, the leukocytes travel outside of the body um, vessels to decide on information to kill the organism. So serial production of information may produce um, cytokines, interleukins, interferons, and lymphokines. Um, the event sequence is um, margination, activation, adhesion, Transmigration and chemotaxis. So basically, no more wound healing and involves repair to um, damaged tissue, removal of the inflammatory debris, the restoration of tissues to a normal state, and then regeneration of the cells to make it normal. Um, so there's the wounds. Primary intention occurs in clean wounds with opposed margin. Um, Secondary intention occurs in a large gape and in infected wounds. Um, some factors that can lead to dysfunctional healing could be infection, inadequate blood supply of foreign bodies. So some specific factors could, could include inadequate nutritional intake, um, anything that interferes with um, wound contraction. Um, hematologic abnormalities, diabetes, AIDS, or the use of the cortical steroids. So this just shows the inflammatory response and then what the body does to repair it. All right, some variations in immunity and inflammation. So the allergen is a hypertensive reaction to the presence of an antigen. Um, 
Several different types of hypertensive reactions include type 1 is immediate hypertensive reaction occurs to in response to a stimulus. And the degrees of severity varies depending on how, how um, hypersensitive you are to it. Type 2 is a cytotoxic hypersensitivity. Cells are destroyed by component. Com cells are destroyed by complement fixation of, or other antibodies. Type 3 tissue occurs. Um, tissue injury caused by immune complexes may be systemic or localized. Um, systemic form is um, serum sickness. It does result in a large, from a large single exposure to an antigen. Um, localized form is um, Arthur's reaction. Type 4 is delayed. Um, it's delayed hypersensitivity or cell mediated cytotoxicity. Um, it just didn't, it doesn't happen as, as quick as possible. Some, some autoimmune reactions um, that target the person's own tissues could be examples of Graves' disease, type 1 diabetes, um, rheumatoid arthritis, um, things like that. So this is just a graph um, that shows you an algorithm to uh, type 1 allergic reaction and what the body's doing. The variance is the autoimmune reaction um, that I just talked about, Graves disease, type 1 diabetes. Um, all right, what's some factors that can cause disease? Um, genetic factors, environmental factors, age-related factors, sex-associated factors, um, some uncontrollable factors um, is genetics and race. Um, um, these could be uncontrollable factors. You know, that you, you can't really choose your genetics and your race. Um, uncontrollable. Some controllable factors could be smoking, drinking alcohol, inaccurate nutrition, lack of physical activity. So, um, all right, some analysis of decreased disease risk involves consideration of uh, disease rates and disease risk factors. Um, all studies of a disease should be considered a um, incidence, prevalence, and mortality of the disease itself. Some causal factors and risk factors that directly cause a disease to develop. Some non causal factors is a risk that are associated with the disease but not direct cause. Um, risk factors, age, and sex differences are often interact with each other. So common um, diseases associated with risk factors, true genetics, risk. It's passed through genetic inheritance of a gene. Um, diseases um, usually cluster in a family group. So, you know, sometimes it's just it's an uncontrollable factor. You, you get it through your genes, um, through heredity. Immunological diseases are caused by hyperactivity or hyperactivity of the immune system. So, here's a graph, um, and it shows, you know, some reactions to an allergen. So the cancer describes pathology associated with mental growth. Um, breast cancer is usually the most common type of cancer among women. Um, colorectal cancer is you know third type common amongst men and women. Um, diabetes is one of the most significant endocrine diseases. So Associated with partial insulin secretion and total lack of insulin secretion by the pancreas. Um, you could have, you know, type 1 or type 2. Hemolytic disorders, um, hemolytic anemia, hemophilia. Um, hemolytic anemia is, is characterized by destruction of the red blood cells. 
Hemophilia is an inherited disorder characterized by excessive bleeding. And hemochromatosis is an inherited disease in which the body absorbs more iron than it needs. Um, cardiovascular disorders may be cardiomyopathy, mitral valve, coronary artery disease, hypertension, stroke. Um, random diseases could be gout, kidney stone, um, so gastrointestinal disorders may be malabsorption disorders, lactose intolerance, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, peptic ulcers, gallstones, and obesity. So neuromuscular disorders may be Huntington. Huntington's disease, muscular dystrophy, muscle sclerosis, Alzheimer's, so it's like a um, psychiatric disorder, schizophrenia, by stress, um, can cause physiological response, so uh, changes that make it necessary for the cell to adapt to the body itself. So it's basically some physiological stress includes the stressor itself, the effects on the body. And the body's response to it. So you got three um, stages: adaptation syndrome. So the alarm stage: the body reacts to the stress by releasing catecholamines. The resistance and adapt adaptation: the body adapts to the stressors primary by stimulating the adrenal glands to create glucocorticoid steroids, correction glucocorticoid, and the anterior pituitary releases a ACTH. In stage two. Stage three, the exhaustion phase, the adrenal glands become depleted, decreasing the blood glucose level. Um, this you know relates to decreased stress tolerance, corrective mental and physical exhaustion, illness, and a collapse itself. You just you tire it out. And it this shows the physiological response to the stress itself. And then stress trigger, triggers increasing of um, the hormone and re results in cortical cortisol secretion. Some of the effects of chronic stress, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis controls reaction to stress. So like, continued stress leads to normal control me mechanisms of the axis. Um, the adrenal glands continue to produce cortisol. Which exhausts the stress mechanism, at least to fatigue and depression, that interferes with serotonin activity. Um, a consistently high cortisol level suppresses the immune system. Um, the coping effects play a role in physiological response to stress. So, um, finally, the patient just has to cope to it to help our immune system out. And that's the end of chapter eight. And immune immunity. Um, a macrophage, macrophage prevents produce, process antigen fragment to the T lymphocyte. The B lymphocyte processes the intact antigen and displays fragments of the same antigen on its cell membrane. Um, yeah, hydrostatic pressure. Like allergic reaction or inflammation, um, venous obstruction, pregnancy, heat stress, uh, decreased cold lower osmotic pressure in capillaries can also be a cause. And the decreased production of plasma proteins in patients with liver disease or severe protein deficiency, increased loss of, of plasma proteins from kidney disease or extensive burn. Or you can also have an obstruction of a lymphatic vessel. Um, Some in-depth physical assessments we need to be doing with edema. You know, we need to be looking and auscultating the breast sounds, especially, um, so we can document that. So as we're giving patient care, we can see if we decrease the fluid off the patient, or are we increasing the fluid for some reason? Evaluation for fetal and sacral edema or jugular vein distension. Um, evaluation of the, um, the vital signs, and a lot of this um, treatment, like I said. It does depend a lot upon the underlying medical condition.